And welcome to welcome to today's class. My name is Connor Rose. Um, I will be showing you how to make some trinket dishes out of Brea Reese's new line of mixed to mold ceramic resin. This class is going to take about an hour, which is also how much time it takes for these to cure. So let's get started. Um, this is going to be super easy and super fun. Um, I've been working with this ceramic resin for a few months now. I've also been doing pottery for about three years now. Um, and the, the finish of these products is really similar to a kiln fired ceramic dish. Um, it personally reminds me a lot of porcelain, um, except it's a lot more durable, which is really great to have around the house. So let's get started with what we need. We're going to need our Mixed to mold ceramic resin here. I'm going to be working with the white, um, our ceramic, or excuse me, our silicone mold. This is a pack of three. I also have my tool kit here, which includes a measuring, measuring cup, a whisk, uh, and a spatula. I'm also going to be using some pigment for some extra bursts of color. And I'll also be working with some terrazzo flakes, which will offer another burst of color and give the, the final product some more texture, which is really fun. Lastly on hand, I also have this matte sealer, um, which we'll talk about later, but you can seal your product afterwards um, for, for either a different finish or depending on what the purpose of the piece is going to be. Let's open up our tool kit here. So we have all of our mixing supplies, that measuring cup. I'm going to open up my ceramic resin here. Again, I'm going to start off by working with just the white. Um, I'll open up my molds too to show you all of these. Again, today we're going to be making the trinket trays, but this ceramic powder, this, the mix to mold works with any silicone tray or mold that you have, which is really great. Um, it has a lot of different purposes and again, super easy to use. So we have our, our large bubble tray, our small bubble tray. So the differences are going to be the, the size of the bubbles on the edges here. And then we have our, our flat coaster to work with. So the first tray I'm going to make, um, we're just going to make a solid basic color to sort of get comfortable with the product here. Uh, what's great about the silicone molds here that um, is made for the mix to mold by Gregory's is that they show you the size of the mold, um, which also tells you the amount of product that you'll be needing to make. So on the back of the packaging also shows you the size and the quantities of what you're going to need to make these. Um, and then the measuring cup itself really helps break this down. So as the, the packaging says, each of these molds are a large. So we're going to be measuring out large amounts of this mixture. In the mix to mold here, there is a scoop I'm gonna grab out to make getting the, the powder out a little bit easier. Um, you can see I've already gotten some powder on my table here. I want to note that um, on your working surface, you can put down a protective layer like newspaper if you want, but all of this is super easy to clean up. We're going to be working with this obviously in its powder state. We're going to be adding some water so it'll be a liquid state at one point and then eventually it will cure too. But um, in each of those forms, it's very easy to clean. Um, so feel free to work on whatever flat surface you have available. At home, I've worked on both my kitchen table and my kitchen countertops um, and feel very comfortable working there. Again, it's super easy to clean up. So here I'm going to measure out the large amount of powder first. Um, so we have our mixed mold on one side of the measuring cup. So the large is up here. a little bit more to get up to that line. So now we have up to our large line there. I'm gonna pour this into my mixing bowl. 
And then on the other side of the measuring cup, we have different lines for the water, which again, it's also labor, but this is the water side. So I'm going to pour up to that large line and add this in. It's a, it's a one to three ratio powder to water. Generally, overall, this mix is super forgiving. So we're gonna stir it together now and until it's smooth. We're looking for a yogurt or like a cake batter type of consistency. Um, but again, super forgiving. So if you're seeing that your consistency is a little thinner or a little thicker than that, that's okay. Um, the, the, pro the final product really won't be affected too much. So now that that's mixed together in my mixing bowl, um, I'm going to add some pigment because again, this first tray that we're making together is going to be that solid color one. And with the, the pigment mixture, you can really add it in at any stage. Um, again, a very easy and forgiving process. Um, I'm mixing it directly in, as you can see, to my water powder mixture that's already there. You could add it to your water beforehand if you wanted or your powder beforehand if you wanted. And it's highly pigmented. Um, so I'm going to just start with two drops. I think I was about two and a half or three and see what I think of that color first. And it's still a little light. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two more drops to get a more vibrant teal. I'm working with the, the teal pigment here. Again, we're just waiting for that pigment to thoroughly be mixed in. So I'm not seeing any streaks. And that's ready to go. So here I have my larger bubble trinket tray molds here. So now I'm just gonna pour it right into the mold. Make sure it's covering that pocket in the bottom. And once that's poured together, we're going to start tapping the outsides. We want to make sure that there's no air bubbles in there. So this will help release any air bubbles in there. And it will also help make sure that the mixture is settled into all the nooks and crannies. Um, since this is just a trinket tray, it's a little more straightforward and flat, so it's easier for the mixture to find all the pockets. Um, I've also made some, some dishes with covers on it. Um, and for those, sometimes I'll take my spatula and sort of poke the mixture into the corners of it, or if it's like a little more, more enclosed mold, just to make sure that all the mixture is getting in there. So again, let's just wait for some of those air bubbles to come out to the top and start popping. I'm not seeing too many here. And so those are the first two out of the three steps. So we, we mixed our mixture, we poured it into the mold, and now we're going to carefully set this aside to cure. Again, that'll take about an hour. Um, so again, I worked with the white ceramic resin here, which is food contact safe after an hour. Um, so at that point, we can pop it out of the mold um, and it would be fine to put food on it. You can also, at that point, you might want to put a sealer on it if you're looking for a glossier finish or a more matte finish like this one offers. Go. Um, and if you are overfilling it or um, you, you're noticing any things on the edges here, you can wipe those off right now if you want. Um, but once it cures and it dries, anything hanging off will be really easy to flake or chip off. Um, this you can also sand this. So once it's cured, um, if there's any any areas that you want to finish off with it differently, you can just sand them away. So while we're letting this cure, we're going to start on our next trinket tray. For this one, we're going to be doing a terrazzo chip. Um, and here's an example here that I made earlier today. This is using the pastel terrazzo chips from Braderies for made for this mix and mold packages. Um, so 
we will do a pretty similar method to what we just did before. For this silicone mold, um, I'm going to be using this flatter coaster one that comes in the packaging because after you pop the, the chorizo ones out of the mold, um, sometimes you're gonna wanna sand it down a little bit. You can see that there, there might be some of the terrazzo chips that aren't coming through for the color. And if you want that color to pop out more, you can just sand away some of the, the whites to make them pop. So for this, we'll start out by sprinkling some of these terrazzo chips right into the mold. Um, for this, we're going to want a really thin layer where we're not looking for um, a heavy amount of terrazzo chips. And we don't want them to really be overlapping so that we so we make sure that the, the mixture that we're going to pour on afterwards is getting everywhere it needs to be and really holding the terrazzo chips in place. So I'm just going to take a small pinch, maybe not even finish my pinch. Uh, I'll spread these around for now. going to be a less is more situation here. You can always add more terrazzo chips. You can take them off in this stage too, but I think it's going to be easier to add more. Uh, I'm going to try to get a couple more of those red flakes in there. I really like that vibrant color. Um, but again, we're, we're sort of sprinkling them around to make sure that there's no overlap and it's just a thin layer. Um, that right now looks like a little bit less than what I put in here. And I think that this terrazzo one that I made earlier today already has a really good amount of pop of color. So again, just lightly placing them there. And there's a couple in the edges of the tray as well of the coaster, the coaster walls. All right, now that those are smoothed around, I'm gonna put these terrazzo chips back over there and we are ready to make more mixed mold. So I'm gonna take out a new bowl to mix this together with this time since for our first trinket tray, I used the teal coloring and I want this to be white. I'm just gonna start brand new. Um, again, this is uh, a large tray as noted on the packaging of the silicone molds. So we're going to measure out the same that we did last time. Again, I'm looking for the large on the mixed to mold half of this cup. The powder. A little more. So powder into the mixing bowl. And now we'll look at the other, the water side of the measuring cup and measure our large amount of water. That into the mixing bowl. I'm gonna bring my whisk back out and whisk this mixture until smooth. So right now I'm waiting to make sure that there's no chunks. I'm scraping up against the wall to make sure everything's incorporated here. Again, we're looking for that cake batter or sort of yogurt consistency. Not Greek yogurt though, that would be much thicker than this. And since this one's the terrazzo chip one, um, the silicone mold does have a pretty good grip on these chorizo flakes. So we're, we're not too worried about moving them around, but I'm still gonna really gently pour this in because I want the chorizo flakes to stay in place as much as possible. So, just start 
slowly pouring this in. You see some of the terrazzo flakes are floating up to the top, but that's okay. And again, we're going to tap these edges to get some of those air bubbles out. With this terrazzo flake one, I'm going to be jiggling and shaking this one a little bit less because I don't want to disturb those terrazzo flakes. Then I'm going to grab that spatula tool from my toolkit. And with the, the terrazzo chips that have floated to the top, I'm just going to poke right back down to the bottom. This is the bottom of the tray, and I definitely want to make sure that the, the chips are showing up the top of the tray there. Just poking those down. A couple more taps for the air bubbles. Now we'll set our chiraffa chip one aside. Um, so I did, again, we made that large amount. Um, there is some extra in my bowl here. Another fun and cool purpose with this mixed mold is, especially when you have extras, um, is you can make your own version, your own homemade chorazo chips. Um, so if you have some extra, if you, if you wanted white chorizo chips, you could just pour this onto something, maybe, maybe some heart paper, maybe some wax paper, um, or a different flat surface. Again, it's very easy to clean up. So you could just pour it right onto um, a smooth table if you wanted to, and then create chips from that. Um, if you wanted to do some colored terrazzo chips, because as you can see, um, the terrazzo chips that have been coming in, these packages are all in different colors. You could add some of the pigment ink into your leftover mix to get a different color. And then again, pour that on something flat wait for it to cure about an hour, and then you could um, crumple it up and make your own trousers chips. I did a version like that the other day, which was really fun. I actually made a, a really small amount of colored mix to mold mixture here with some color, poured a really thin layer onto my tray, waited for it to cure and broke it up. And then I poured white on top. Um, so it was larger chorizo chips, and that was the outcome came out really good. It was fun. So I'm going to put this. Actually, I'll leave this bowl. I'll leave this bowl out for our final tray. Uh, for this final tray, we're going to be doing a marbled version. So you can see a couple of different marbled ones here. We're going to be mixing two different colors. Um, I'm going to be mixing that teal that we used before, so it'll come out pretty close to this one, but each of these is just uh, a two color mixture. So we would just make um, one bowl of white and then we'll make one bowl of the mix and pour it into our molds. You could use more colors if you wanted. Um, aside from the ink pigments, there's also some different colored powders that Bray Reese makes for their mixed to mold. So you can use those as well. I've used a couple versions of those. Um, I think either using the, the ink or the colored powders works really well. So we have our white here. Um, and this does have about 20 minutes of working time um, or time to work with it before it really needs to be put into the mold and settled. So that's why I'm gonna continue working with this one that I've already made because we still have plenty of time until we need to get it into the bowls. But I will print out another bowl to mix together the teal pigment. So since we already have a fair amount of this white, I'll add a little bit more to it. Um, I'll just go with a small measurement on our measuring cup to do this. So one of the differences between using either the, the pigment ink or the pigmented powders is the, the white 
I'm going right into my bowl. <laughs> Again, it's a super forgiving um, mix and ratio, so that's okay. Um, at this point, I guess I'll just go straight into my bowl. Um, so now I'll just add a tiny little bit of water going um, a little bit below my small in the watering cup. And mix this. Um, anyway, so a difference between using the, the pigment inks and the pigmented powders is whether it's food contact safe or not. So again, using the white syringe resin powder, this is going to be food safe once it cures for an hour. It's also going to be food safe if you use the pigmented ink because this is also food safe. Um, but the any of the powders that are colored themselves, they are not food safe. But if you wanted your end result to be food safe, you could just add one of the mixed mold sealers to it at the end. Um, again, you would add that once it's been cooked for an hour. You can also paint these if you want. Um, we've seen that done a lot. I've seen some people try that out. That also has a great finish to it. Um, just depends on the, the glossiness that you want to it. Um, and of course, painting it, you have a lot more options of colors too. So now I'm going to mix together my teal bowl. So I'll grab my measuring cup. And since I added more to that front white one, I'm going to just measure out a small amount of mixed mold here. So on my powder side, I have a small. And now again on my water side, just tap this to make sure we're getting as much powder out as possible. Now on my water side, I'm going to add a small amount. And you can see that my measuring cup, because now I've used it a couple times, is starting to collect some mixture of its own. It has some of that wet powder in it. So at the end, we'll be able to see how easily that is to pop out of this cup. Um, it is plastic, so it's nice and bendable, which also helps to pop out anything that's going to be in there, especially if it's a part of the cured product. So now mixing my second bowl here. And now I'm going to add again the, the teal pigmented ink into this mixture, starting out with three drops there. And since we're marbling and it's going to have a contrast with the white, um, you can see it looks pretty pigmented right now, but since we have that contrast and we want the colors to pop, I'm going to add in two more drops there. And it looks like some of the powder clung to my cup a little bit because this is a pretty thin consistency. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more powder to my steel. About a teaspoon and mix that together until it is nice and smooth. And we're not seeing any more lumps of the powder. And then since this one's been sitting here for a little bit, I'm going to tap out as much color as I can off of that. I'm going to remix my white one. And to get that marbling, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can pour each bowl at once. You could pour one at a time and sort of go back and forth. Or my preferred method is to just pour these all into one bowl. 
and I won't mix it, but the colors will be somewhat combined in here. If it's a thinner consistency, they might mix together more. I don't want them to mix together very much in the bowl because I want to sort of be able to play with it once it gets into the mold here. So now I'm going to slowly pour into my silicone mold. That, that white is coming out on top. Overfilled a little bit, but again, very easy to clean up. Um, my surface is a little unlevel, so we're I'm just going to try to put this in the center more now. Um, I do want to make sure that there's enough white in here to marble it, so I'm just going to mix this together to get some of that white to show through. Put some of that on top. Now I'm going to grab my spatula once I clean some of this up. I'm going to grab a couple more paper towels here. And then that. I am working on a cardboard surface here. Um, so this might not look like it's cleaning up as easily as it does because it's slightly sticking to the top. But if you're working on um, a standard desk, kitchen table, or countertop that's going to be smooth, um, not absorbent, of course, and much easier to do any cleaning. So for this marbled effect, um, I'm taking the end of my whisk from my tool, and I'm just going to swirl it around a little bit. If you've ever made um, certain flavors or decorated the cheesecake differently. This is very similar to how you would do that. Um, this is the bottom of the tray. So I am trying to stir it to, to where I can feel the other end of it to make sure that it's getting some of those colors down there too. I'm gonna work it into the edges a little bit. So for this one, when you're mixing the colors, you could probably just make a small one of each color. If you're doing just two colors, if you're doing three, you probably wanna mix a little bit less. Um, but again, if you have extra colors and you have uh, an extra mold on hand, you could just pour it into another mold to make another tray or dish or you could pour them and make your own chocolate chips. So now our third marbled one is curing. And now we've made, we have all of our trays resting in our dishes here. So as we're waiting for them to cure, unless I just touched them. So this one, this first one that we made here, the solid color one, is starting to get a little warm, which you'll notice it does throughout the curing process. This one, our terrazzo chip one, is still a little bit wet there, wet to touch. Um, and of course, this one we just poured, so it's still very wet. Um, this one's been sitting here for about 20 minutes. Um, it's not soft to touch, I would say, but we're still gonna want to let it sit there for a little bit longer until we pop it out of the mold. I'm gonna put these dishes down and we can talk about the terrazzo one a little bit more because I pre-made one of them to show you as an example. Um, so this is pretty fresh out of the silicone mold there. I haven't sanded it yet, which we're going to want to, to give it um, a more, a different finish so we can see the terrazzo chips pop out more. Here's one that I made at the same time that I'll just pop out of the mold here. Just to give you an example of the sanding and how it looks right now. So right now you can see some of these divots from the terrazzo chips from maybe where the mixture didn't wrap all the way around the terrazzo chips, which we don't want because we want to be able to see the terrazzo chips. 
So to sand it, I recommend sanding it when it's wet. So I'm gonna get my water over here. My tray of water. Um, I have my craft sander here as well. Let me try to move this up so you can see it. examples out of the way. To push these up here. All right, so I'm gonna dip this in water with my sander. I'm just gonna lightly Start to sand the outside of this, just in some gentle circles. I'm trying to get rid of any rough edges that are surrounding the terrazzo chips. And then if there's any mixture going over any of the terrazzo chips themselves, I'm just gonna try to get that off so we can see some more color pop through. But very easy. Just some light sanding. And as we do that, we can just dip it in the water and clean it off. Go around the entire tray very gently. And you can already see some of that color starting to pop out a little bit more and it has a thinner or smoother finish to it. So you're not seeing any rough white lines. The terrazzo chips at this point look much more like they're a part of the dish or the, the coaster or trinket dish itself. Now I'm just gonna wipe this off and set it to the side. I'm gonna put my water away and we'll check back on that first one that we made. So here's, I'm um, just gonna dry my hands a little more. I'm working with that water. Connor, what grit are you using to sand your uh, piece? That's a great question. So this um this is my craft sander, and I can't see a number on here, so I don't know this exact grit, but it reminds me of what I was working with at home the other day, which was 200. And that will... So you can see it's not, not really leaving any lines. It's pretty smooth. And if you wanted to, you could also go down and grit too slowly. At this point, I'm gonna pop this out of the mold. I can feel it start to cool down. I'm not going to, it's still been under an hour, so I'm not gonna poke a fingernail through it or, or really try to compromise the shape but I'll pop it out so we can get an idea of this. So again, this is our first pigmented tray. That's a beautiful blue. It's very cloud-like. Um, you can see it, it really got into all the grooves there. The color's really smooth and well mixed. And it came out really great. Again, you could sand this outside if you wanted to. Um, the, the rims, the edges of all this are all very smooth and nice. So I'm not going to do anything to it. I think it's pretty perfect as it is. So you can see that final product there. Just gonna put my mold away under here. Now we can check on our Terrazzo one. So you can see a couple of my fingerprints in there. I touched it a little too early. That was maybe, when it was in there for 
20 minutes, not very long. Um, so it's still cool to touch. So I can tell that it hasn't warmed up yet. So it's definitely still curing. Um, so I'm not gonna touch the mold or the, the mixture itself. Um, I'm not gonna put any pressure on the edges. Really at this point, you should let it still sit to the side by itself. But I do wanna show you what it looks like. You can start to see the chorizo chips through the silicone mold, which will be really exciting. We'll probably wait another five or 10 minutes before we pop that off. Um, again, that'll still be a little bit early, but um, within our hour together, I do want to show you what the final product is gonna look like. Um, and then last we have our marble one here, which was the newest of them all. So you can still see that this one's pretty shiny and wet. So we're going to leave that one alone as much as possible. Do we have any other questions about technique or uses for mixed mold? So we have uh, someone who asked about, uh, could you put a photo in the tray? Oh, interesting. You could. Um, I question how that would turn out, though. That makes me think of the, the terrazzo chips, where you might want to sand it afterwards. But of course, you wouldn't want to sand your own picture. That being said, um, I'm sure there's a silicone mold out there that's in maybe a square or a rectangle, so you could create a frame out of some mixed mold, because the mixed mold does work in any silicone mold. So there's different ways to incorporate a picture if you wanted to. Um, this this mix to mold, so the, the standard one is in white, but again, there are some colors that you could use. There's not a translucent or a see-through option though, so I wouldn't recommend putting a photo into a mold just because I wouldn't want that photo to get damaged. Makes sense. Um, we also had someone who asked, can you make jewelry from this mixture? Uh, and if so, like, how would you remove it from the mold, et cetera? And I know that Callie touched on that very briefly in the chat, but I figured I'd ask that for sort of our viewers at large. Sure, absolutely. You can absolutely make jewelry with this. There are different jewelry molds that you can use with it. They can be jewelry specific molds, um, or if you find a small mold that you like that you would like to create a piece of jewelry out of, you could absolutely do that too. Um, again, this, this really reminds me of um, porcelain. It's definitely hard and durable, so it would be great to make jewelry out of, whether it's dangly earrings or maybe some pendants for necklaces, um, but there's a lot of different molds out there that you could create different types of jewelry with. And then one last question. Uh, are we going to get an example of how that uh, um, sealer works. We just had someone who was curious about that and I wasn't sure if we were going to talk about yeah. that. Sure. So since this one is feeling pretty cured by now, I can apply some of the matte sealer to this. I'm um, going back to the jewelry part quickly because um, um, I'm remembering now that I've seen some examples with some gold flakes in there. There's a lot of other things that you can incorporate with mixed to mold. Um, besides just the terrazzo chips and the different pigmented ink, you could also incorporate some gold flakes, um, either as the same way that you do the terrazzo chips by adding them into the mold first, or you could paint some on top afterwards. Again, you can also paint um, the, the cured version themselves with different colors. If you wanted any other design on the, the jewelry, just kind of peel the top of the seal off. Um, and then with the with this matte sealer, there's also the glossy sealer. You could also apply those to jewelry for that finish. Um, but again, any other product too. Um, and if you are using the colored powder for the mixed to mold, that would also make those products food contact safe. So I'm just going to grab a little bit on my brush here, starting off with less, because we can always add more. We'll start by applying 
right in the center there. And a little bit more, start to go along the edges. Does come on pretty thick here. So I'm just spreading it all around and trying to get an even and somewhat thin layer all around. But you can already see that it's making the color much more matte. And although the, the sealant itself is glossy right now because it's not yet dry, you can still see that it's going to give the final look of the tray a much more matte look. And I do have an example of one that was used, that was sealed with the matte sealer below me that I'll grab in just a second. I'm just gonna make sure all of these edges are brushed. Go all the way around and start brushing downwards. I think that goes along with the, the shape of these bubbles well. I'm just touching up on any way that I can see any streaks. Okay, now I'll we'll let that hang out on the side there. Let me grab this example. So here is a matte example. So this was painted with, or it was used um, uh, one of the magenta pigments, pigments it looks like, and then added with the sealer on top. So this actually looks like a glossy sealer. I wouldn't say that's more on the matte side, but there's an example of the other sealer. And so this would be that small bubble tray that comes in that kit. Um, the small bubbles, again, referring to the size of the edges here, and this would be the large bubble silicone mold that comes in the kit. You can see that this is starting to cure our last marble one, looking a lot more dry than it was a couple minutes ago, which goes to show how quickly this all cures. And this Chirazo one, I'm going to Gently start to take out of the silicone mold. Again, it's been under an hour, um, but I'm just taking it out a little bit early to show you all what it's looking like. Um, so these do cure to the point where they're food safe in an hour, or food contact safe. Um, but for it to completely harden, that'll take about 24 hours. So here, is our terrazzo chip. This was the, so this is the Earth Tones terrazzo chip package. And then this one that I was showing you earlier is the pastel terrazzo chip package. So at this point, um, it's really not, can't even really put a fingernail at this point. It's pretty cured. So I'm going to sand this one now or together. Push these up forward. I'm gonna bring my water back up here. I'm going to dip this into the water. You can dip your sand in there too. Just gently go along. We're also going gently because we don't want to pop any of the chorizo flakes off. We're just trying to smooth out any edges. You can see we had a couple trees of shape flakes get into the walls of the, the tray here, which also look really good. Sometimes any molds that have walls on them or more depth are going to be a little bit more difficult. Oh, see, I sanded this one too hard, so the flake popped off. So just a reminder to sand very gently.
And we're just looking to smooth out those white edges. Now I'm dipping it into the water just to get off some of the paste that the what I'm sanding off combined with the water is creating. Here, so you can see this green trees are like right there. It's not completely coming through, so I'm just going to sand this one individually. Try to make that color pop through. You can see that that's already popping through a little bit more. There's another one over here that I'll sand. Just very gently. Now I'll wipe this off with a paper towel to give you a good look of it. And here we go. Here's our terrazzo chip tray. So this could be used as a trinket tray or a coaster. And then just to show you what the bottom looks like too, it's also really smooth itself. Show you the level version. Um, lays nice and flat. Um, it's again, very smooth. You could put cork or felt on the back of this if you wanted to, um, which is also available through breweries um, if you were worried about the scratching anything. So that would be a good example for a coaster usage um, if, you're, if you're worried about scratching any coffee tables or other platforms or surfaces. Do we have any other questions? We did have someone ask about using uh, cookie cutters. Sure. So like while well, partially dried, so. Sure, so with a cookie cutter, since that doesn't have um, a base to it, you would need to make sure that that's weighted down so that the, the liquid wouldn't leak underneath. That might be difficult to do. It really depends on the surface that you're working with or the material underneath what you're working with is. Um, so it could be risky, but it can be done. Um, yeah, we're just trying to make sure it's either stuck to something on the bottom or that there's the weight on top to make sure that the mixture isn't leaking out. Um, it is very, very thin when you're following the ratio guide on the packaging, that three to one ratio. So when I was making my own chorizo flakes the other day and was just pouring it out, it did spill out pretty wide. So I imagine it would probably sleep underneath the cookie cutter. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but that was a good question. You can see that this sealer is also drying pretty quickly too. And it really maintained the color. The color didn't um, get reduced at all from adding the sealer, which is nice. It's pretty transparent. It just changes the finish a little bit. No one mentioned this cup too. At this point, the mixture is pretty dried in there. So you can get an idea of how easy this is to just get right out of the cup. I'm just squeezing along and you can see that at the base, it's already coming apart. And with this, you'll just be able to Really tap the mixture out at the end. You can maybe use your spatula too. I think it still might be a little wet, but once it's completely cured, it's really easy to pop out of here and be able to reuse. I have the, the bowls down here, which are also, this was very cured at this point. So it'll be pretty easy to get out of there. Um, but all very easy to use. Um, of course, if you don't have the measuring tools, again, all the measurements are available on the back of the packaging. Very forgiving ratio. You could use whatever else you have on hand to mix these. Really, all you need is the powder, the mold, and water, um, and then a, a stirring utensil. But besides that, it's pretty simple. It's just mixing, pouring, and then popping out of the mold. This one's starting to cool down. I felt it a couple minutes ago and it was getting warm. So at this point, I'm going to pop it out of the mold. 
and see how we did for that marbling effect. You can even hear, or maybe hopefully you can hear with the example, um, the any dried flakes on top of the mold from being on the table are just spilling right off of the mold. So here is the final tray that we made. It has that marbling look to it. So it has the, the white and the blue straights. You can see, so here with the with the more defined scratches in it, you can see that that's where I really got the spatula all the way to the bottom and swirled them around to try to incorporate that white more. And then on this side, it's pretty nice and wavy. We can see it was more of a natural marble to it. I'm trying to show you here with that lighting. There we go. It's very hard already. Again, I'm not gonna put my fingernail through it yet because it hasn't been a full hour, um, but goes to show how quickly this cures and how quickly it is to be ready to use. Um, would be great activity to do with anyone since it all does happen very fast. And since it cleans up really easily too, that's definitely a bonus when doing crafts. I've got my mold down to the side there. Do we have any other questions about anything? No, it looks like you've answered most of the questions or Callie or Jen have answered them in chat. So uh, okay. I think Great. that's pretty much everything. Well, thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions about any of the mixed to mold, be sure to go to brayerace.com or you can also check out the product on michaels.com and it is available to purchase on both michaels.com or in store. Thank you so much, Connor. And thank you everyone for being here. We're so excited to have you and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Thank you, everyone.